In this video, we'll talk about coordinate mapping. Coordinate mapping allows us to think about any vector space as Rn. And that's useful for us because we've developed many tools when working with vectors in Rn. So let's start by defining what the coordinate mapping is. Let B be a basis for a vector space V, consisting of vectors B1 through Bn. The linear transformation T from V to Rn, given by T of x equals the B coordinate vector of x, is called the coordinate mapping from V to Rn. So again, what this allows us to do is think about elements in a vector space as column vectors that we're used to. Let's look at a quick example. So let's consider the vector space V of all polynomials of degree at most two. Part A says verify that the set B consisting of one T T squared is a basis for V. To check that B is a basis, I need two things. I need that the elements of B are linearly independent and also that those elements span V. To check linear independence, I want to look at the equation C1 times 1 plus C2 times T plus C3 times T squared equals 0 and see if there are non-trivial solutions. Now on the right side of this equation, there aren't any T squares, so that means that C3 has to be 0. On the right hand side, there aren't any T's, so that makes C2 0. Lastly, the constant on the right is 0, so C1 also has to be 0. This means the only solution to this equation is C1 equals 0, C2 equals 0, and C3 equals 0. And that's the trivial solution. So that tells me that 1, t, and t squared are linearly independent. Next, we need to check that the span of 1, t, and t squared is all of v. Now, if I have a polynomial of degree at most 2, it's something of the form a times t squared plus b times t plus c. So the question is, can I write that as a linear combination of 1, t, and t squared? And the answer is yes. It's c times 1 plus b times t plus a times t squared. So since any polynomial of degree at most 2 can be written as a linear combination of 1, t, and t squared, we have that 1, t, and t squared spans v. So we've verified that the set B is indeed a basis for the vector space V. In fact, B is called the standard basis for the set of polynomials of degree at most 2. Now let's see how we would think about these polynomials as the column vectors that we're used to. So in part B, we're asked to find the B coordinate vector for the following polynomials. First, we want to find the B coordinate vector for the polynomial 1. If I want to find the B coordinates for something, I would need to write it as a linear combination of my basis vectors. So how can I write 1 as a linear combination of 1, t, and t squared? Well, 1 is 1 times 1 plus 0 times t plus 0 times t squared. So remember that the b coordinates are the weights in the linear combination. So in this case, it's 1, 0, and 0. So my b coordinate vector for the polynomial 1 is 1, 0, 0. So next, what about the b coordinate vector for t? Well, I can write t as a linear combination of my basis vectors. t is equal to 0 times 1 plus 1 times t plus 0 times t squared. So again, the b coordinates are the weights. In this case, the weights are 0, 1, and 0. So the b coordinate vector for t is 0, 1, 0. Next, we want to find the b coordinate vector for t squared. So writing t squared as a linear combination of my basis, I have t squared equals 0 times 1 plus 0 times t plus 1 times t squared. Therefore, my b coordinate vector for t squared is 0, 0, 1. Next, I want to find the b coordinate vector for 3t squared minus t plus 2. So again, I want to write this as a linear combination of my basis vectors. So 3t squared minus t plus 2 is 2 times 1 plus negative 1 times t plus 3 times t squared. So the b coordinate vector for this polynomial is 2, negative 1, 3. Lastly, let's find the b coordinate vector for at squared plus bt plus c. Well, this polynomial can be written as c times 1 plus b times t plus a times t squared. 
So the B coordinate vector for A T squared plus B T plus C is C B A. We can also convert from a column vector back to a polynomial. So in part C, we're told that the B coordinate vector for X is negative 5, 3, 2. And we're asked to find the polynomial X. If I know the B coordinates for X, then I know how to express X as a linear combination of my basis vectors. Namely, that X is equal to negative 5 times 1 plus 3 times T plus 2 times T squared. And that's our polynomial. X is the polynomial 2t squared plus 3t minus 5. Next, we'll be looking at a theorem, but we won't be proving it in this video. So the theorem states that if I have a basis b for a vector space v consisting of vectors b1 through bn, then the coordinate mapping t of x equals the b coordinate vector for x is an isomorphism from v to rn. Now I won't be going into too much detail about this theorem, and I won't be formally defining what the word isomorphism means, but essentially what it means is that V and Rn are equivalent vector spaces. Now this is very useful for us because we've worked a lot with vectors in Rn. So let's look at an example of how this can be applied. So in this example we have three polynomials. V1 equals t squared minus 2t plus 1, V2 equals t squared minus t, and v3 equals t squared plus t minus 2. And we're asked to determine if these polynomials are linearly independent. Just looking at these as polynomials, it's hard to tell whether or not there are any relationships between them. I don't know if any of them can be written as linear combinations of the others. But what I can do is use the coordinate mapping to think about these polynomials as vectors. So let's take our standard basis for polynomials of degree at most 2. So our basis B is the set of polynomials 1, t, and t squared. Now I can find the B coordinate vector for each of these polynomials. The B coordinate vector for V1 is 1, negative 2, 1. The B coordinate vector for V2 is 0, negative 1, 1. And lastly, the B coordinate vector for V3 is negative 2, 1, 1. Now that I have vectors in R3 to work with, I can answer the question, are these vectors linearly independent? Well, to answer that, I would put all of these vectors into a matrix and row reduce. If every column is a pivot column, then I know that these vectors are linearly independent. Otherwise, they're linearly dependent. So I'm looking at the matrix 1, 0, negative 2, negative 2, negative 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. I won't go through the details of row reducing here, but what you should get at the end is the matrix 1, 0, negative 2, 0, 1, 3, 0, 0, 0. Since the last column is not a pivot column, I can conclude that these vectors are linearly dependent. And that also tells me that the polynomials themselves are linearly dependent. Since these polynomials are linearly dependent, as a follow-up, I can ask you to express one of these polynomials as a linear combination of the others. Again, this question would be difficult to answer if I'm just thinking about them as polynomials. But if I think about them as vectors, I can use the work that we've done already to help us answer this question. If we look back at the matrix that we formed, remember that each of the columns represents one of the polynomials. So if I want to find the relationship between the polynomials, I want to see if there's any relationships between the columns of that matrix. Now we've previously learned that row operations do not change the relationships between the columns of a matrix. So looking at the reduced row echelon form of this matrix, we see that the third column can be written as a linear combination of the first two columns. We see that the third column can be expressed as negative 2 times the first column plus 3 times the second column. And because these vectors are equivalent to the polynomials, I have the same relationship. V3 can be expressed as negative 2V1 plus 3V2. And we can check this. Let's do negative 2 times V1. So that's negative 2 times t squared minus 2t plus 1 plus 3 times V2. That's 3 times t squared minus t. Distributing this, we get minus 2t squared plus 4t minus 2 plus 3t squared minus 3t. 
And when we collect the like terms, we get t squared plus t minus 2. And that's v3, as we expected. Again, coordinate mapping allows us to take vector spaces that we're unfamiliar with and think about them as just Rn, which we are very familiar with. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Thanks for watching.